for Sage. My name is Alex Lavelle. I'm a project manager at Commercient, uh, and I'll be showing you our basic sync today. Uh, if you have any questions as we go, please feel free to ask them in the questions tab of the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, the demo itself takes about eight, ten minutes, and once it wraps up, I will address any questions that have been asked there. Um, you should all be able to see my screen now. We are on an accounts page within Salesforce. If you're familiar with Salesforce, this will look very familiar to you. Um, I just wanted to draw attention on this page to this column called Commercial AR Customer Code. Uh, this column is a quick way to tell whether an account is syncing with Sage or has been created natively in Salesforce and is not syncing back to anything. Uh, for the customers on screen here, you see that it's been filled out, which is how you know it is syncing back. If this column were blank, that would mean this account had been created inside of Salesforce but not linked back to a Sage account. Um, also, just a general note before we move ahead, right now I'm looking at Sage 100, but we are compatible with most versions of Sage 50, 100, 200, uh, a, a, a 3x, uh, 500, um, a couple of others that I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm missing here, uh, as well as both the US and Canadian versions of those. So if you have any questions about compatibility, again, feel free to ask as we go. If we take a look at an account inside of Salesforce, again, if you're familiar with Salesforce, the screen's going to look pretty familiar to you. Um, we are what Salesforce calls a licensed managed package. Uh, and what that really means is that we have worked alongside Salesforce to make sure that we are fully compatible with security protocols, as well as uh, compatibility for layout tools already in Salesforce and how we display our information. In other words, everything we bring in, all of our data that comes in from Sage through Commercial, uh, uses the exact same tools that you would use to control your layout and your security uh, for natively created Salesforce data. As we scroll down, you'll start to see some of the difference uh, in uh, my system as compared to a standard Salesforce screen. We have a series of related lists on screen that uh, display data from different tables inside of Sage. So in this case, I'm looking at the AR customer record, the ship to address table, the open sales orders and their line items, the invoices and their line items, and the invoice payments for this customer. Uh, each of these related lists and each column in this li these lists uh, is controlled through standard layout and security tools. So if there are pieces of data or entire tables that you don't want certain users to be able to access, um, whether it's sensitive data or simply something they don't need to see, uh, you have the ability to restrict access to those or you can deploy layouts by user or by role and make sure that people are seeing exactly what you want them to see. Uh, any item that's in each of these database tables that you're not seeing in my related lists right now, uh, you can put on here. I've picked some common fields uh, to show on screen, but any data that you see us bring in, which is really any data that comes in from the database uh, in these tables, you can display on screen here. Uh, and if there are tables that you, you, you will hide, you can hide them as well. Uh, if we take a look at a sales order for this customer, uh, what you see on the screen here is very like what one of my live users' screens would look like. General order header, sorts of information at the top, um, address information, my bill to and ship to address for the order. Uh, and then at the bottom, the sales order lines. Uh, I have an extra section here called additional information, which is where I've stuck all the extra fields uh, that I'm not using just to be able to show them for demo purposes. But in a live system, I would say pull these off and hide them. You can always put them back on if you're not using them. Uh, one note, um, we do automatically map in UDFs 
and bring those in as a part of the sync. So there's no special customization that has to be done to bring in your UDFs. As we drill further down and take a look at one of the line items, again, you'll see the same sort of thing. My general line item information, everything's linked back to the account as well as to the open order. I can jump straight back. Again, I've got some information hidden um, that will to you if you want to display. And I'll straight back to my account. Divine, this, uh, design the system to be very easy navigable. Uh, sometimes you'll go in knowing exactly the piece of data you want to get to uh, and won't have to look around to find it, but other times you may want to research. Um, or if you're a salesperson about to go on site, visit with, with one of your customers, and you want to see what samples have we been providing. Has this customer been placing orders based on those samples for those items, or are they really just taking the samples and not ordering anything? Uh, do they have any outstanding invoices? Are they on hold? All of those types of information are available to salespeople um, at their fingertips. We are looking at this now through the standard web interface, but the commercial tool is also fully compatible with the Salesforce One platform. Um, again, we're certified by Salesforce to work with Salesforce One. And actually, once you set up your screens in the traditional site, they'll set up automatically and map out automatically for the mobile platform. So regardless of whether you're on a computer, a tablet, a smartphone, really any device, you can get to your, your information that way. Uh, one last note, uh, while all of the information that we bring in is still owned and controlled by your Sage system, uh, we do bring it in in such a way that it also is treated as a part of the native Salesforce database. What that means is that I can search on any part number, customer number, uh, invoice number, sales order, et cetera, and see all of the information relevant to that number. So accounts who have ordered it, the sales orders and line items for that, the invoice payments that item. Um, if you're using quotes and opportunities in Salesforce and you've raised a quote for that item, you would see those records here as well. Uh, regardless of whether the source of a piece of information is Sage or Salesforce or another app that you may use, uh, it'll all be available on screen here together. Similarly, all of this information is available for report building inside of Salesforce, for the creation of dashboards in Salesforce, and it's available to any other third-party app exchange apps that you may use. Uh, if they have a way to use that data, it'll be available to them. So for instance, uh, uh, we have some users who have apps that take addresses and map out their service reps' service calls for a day um, based on the geotagging inside of those records. Uh, so everything is available. Um, everything is easily accessible within the system. Um, what we've seen here is uh, the standard baseline package. There are other functions that we can bring in, uh, some of which write back to Sage uh, through the visual integrator tool. Um, but what we've looked at today is a quick win. Uh, it's a great way to get a lot of information into, Sa into Salesforce from Sage uh, very quickly. Uh, it provides great oversight to your salespeople and it's affordable. So it's a really good quick win um, if, if you're wanting to get better visibility for your salespeople. On that note, uh, that's really sort of the end of the line. So if anyone has questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, I don't have any waiting for me at the moment, but I'm happy to hang around a few minutes and uh, address them if anyone has any. Otherwise, thank you. Uh, I hope what you've seen has been helpful. Uh, and interesting to you. Uh, we will be following up with everyone who's attended one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so if you do think of questions after you've left the session, you'll, be, you'll still have a chance to ask them to us. Uh, otherwise, thank you uh, and have a good day.
All right, it doesn't look like we're getting any questions. Um, so I'm going to end the webinar. If you think of anything, again, we'll be following up with you. Otherwise, you can respond to the email that you received the link to join this meeting from. Uh, and actually, we'll get those emails as well. Uh, it's not just a robot uh, that, that eats them. Um, they'll come to us and we can address them that way too.